Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that, that he may perfectly love you, and worthy magnify thy holy name. Taking what lies behind and reaching out to do what is before, we may run the way of your commandments <coughs> and win the crown of everlasting joy. To Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We now have the proclamation of the word, the reading of the first lesson. First lesson is taken from Job third, chapter 38, reading from verse 1 to 7. Then the Lord answered Job out of the, out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, I will question you, and you shall declare to me, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me. If you have understanding, who determines its measures? Surely you know. Or who stretches the line upon it? Or what were its base sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Psalms 104, verses 1 to 9. eternal light. Heaven and earth are the work of your hands, and all creation sings your praise and beauty. As in the beginning, by your spirit you give life and order to all that is. So by the same spirit, redeem us and all things to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Second lesson. Second lesson from Hebrews 5, verses 1 to 10. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness, and because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming an high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son today, 
I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered a praise and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church.
seated. of our hearts. Be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be the servant for all. Humility is rather peculiar to man's existence from the beginning because one way or the other we like to put ourselves up at the top over the other person and especially over the many years that there have been what you call, what they call discovery of the new world. It wasn't really discovery because the world was there anyhow. It became a matter of, instead of being humble, in recognizing what God had done and created for all men to enjoy and to share, 
became a situation whereby one set of people wanted to rule others and only saw themselves as being able to lord it over other people. In this example we saw in the case of uh, our Lord's disciples early even before he even suffered the death on the cross. The two brothers, James and John. They went, according to the scripture this morning, and said, would you be willing to do anything, do what we will ask you to do? In other parts, of, in other scriptures, in other gospels, it said, was the mother who went to Jesus and say, give my two sons a prominent place. But then we saw the result of that. Not first of what Jesus said to them, but what the other disciples did and reacted. They started to fight among themselves. Who is the greatest? Who has more power? Who therefore should exert the power among the, among the community? Not even, even among themselves as the disciples, but on the greater world. Who therefore should be seen as the greatest person of all? Man has always been like that. It was in, the, in Genesis, the mythical story, that man decided to be as great as God, and decided to eat that which was forbidden. Because he was told, if you do this, you will be as great as God. Man has always felt that he can do things even beyond what God has done. Remember when he built the Tower of Babel. By building that tower, it felt that somehow we've gone as high as possible, we even greater than God. The tower was destroyed. And the mythical story that that is why you have so many different languages in the world. Because it's felt that if you have one language, the language of the owner or the person who is controlling, everyone else will be the servant or the slave. During the times of going around the world, discovering things, it was always a matter of who is stronger, who is above, who is below. Granted, also. Even in the case of a few years ago, when many of us migrated to other countries, it was, all right, you possibly came in on the lowest rock. But then you work yourself up, having businesses, doing things, Becoming, becoming educated, qualified to lead. But yet, it was a situation whereby they were others saying, no, you cannot. Your place is below me. Even among the disciples of Jesus, you had a situation whereby two felt that they must be given a prominent position. In the gospel they said, one said, can you put me one on the right hand and the other on your left? The usual understanding in those days of one with power, the king would sit and on his right and left 
you had the ADCs who would carry out the order. Granted, even at the altar, I wouldn't have anyone sitting my left and right. The MC is there, but we are all equal. The deacons and the other priests are there. But we are all servants of God. Oh yes, I might carry a name or a designation. But it doesn't mean that I am more powerful in calling upon the Spirit of God to work for me, for you, or even among us. We are all equal. Equal in the expression of our prayers. Equal in what we do. And this was the hallmark of Christ's ministry. Humility calls for servility. To be humble means you'll be willing to serve others, willing to be with them, and not to walk around as if you've come from some space object to lord it over others. I was a little amused the other day when the death of the Queen's husband was announced. And in the Fiji, it said they mourned because they regarded him as their God. No. No human being can be the God of another human being. I don't think he thought of so himself. Because he showed his humility by even walking behind his wife instead of in front of her or even beside her. Humility showing the willingness to serve and to do things. I remember years ago becoming a priest. And the Archbishop sent me into the most destitute place, what we call in Guyana the bush, to go and work with the people. Jim, you must learn from now to be humble. And working with the people meant sitting down sometimes, you know, in the usual kind of incense. They didn't have fancy tables for lunch or anything as out. Beside them on the step, with the enamel plate in your hand and a spoon. And had to be humble enough to do as they did. I went into the other areas. They might not have had spoon or anything of the sort. They put the food in front of me and they say, use your hand. And so I had to develop the technique of squeezing the rice with the dal and everything and making it into a ball and putting it in my mouth. Oh yes, humility therefore gave me the opportunity to serve. And that's not only me, I'm sure for you, each and every one of you. Your humility to accept responsibility in the parish and in your community. Give you the ability to serve without complaining. To serve even on the times when people might be against you. People might easily say things against you. Yet, you say, not my will, but thine be done. But in today's life, 
and especially in today's life. We see the need for the humility of every human being. Humility of people to accept that you must not be the person who say, I must always win and I'll destroy a country just for me to say that I am great. Arrogance is not humility. Humility means not being willing to be so cruel to others. Your parents or you yourselves may have migrated. We our parents or our godparents may have migrated under rather strenuous conditions. But then, by God's grace, we have become very strong persons. And we acknowledge this. And we still acknowledge our humility to worship and to be with God. And to turn to him and say ever so often, Lord, help me. If we don't do that, what we do instead? Oh, I'm above church. I'm above God. I'm above those hypocrites who possibly walk up to the altar every now and again. I'm above those who feel that they must serve a creator. And Job had a lesson in the lesson we heard this morning. Everybody has pointed out to him, where were you when I was creating every single thing? You weren't even born yet. But then, the magnificence of the world was created. And you've come to share that magnificence and learn about it for a while. And yet you and your friends trying to say that, hey, you are greater than me. You are greater than God. The lack of humility is the development of selfishness. I must be able to sit on the right and on the left. Anybody else must come under me. Humility means not being so selfish to sort of put yourself in positions that everyone must quote out to you. But then, although you are in a prominent position, yes, it's a time when you must also be willing to serve. And so the second lesson this morning talks of the high priests and the priests forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yes, as a priest, it was a matter of a total service. And as a servant of God, it means being able to see yourself not as a great one, but as one who is willing to serve regardless of your own greatness or impediment as a, as a child of God. And so, the lessons today hit home to each and every one of us in our own way. Yes. Those of you in the pews, you've learned to be humble, to come to offer your prayers to God, thinking only that, God, I am not really worthy. I may have sinned, but you have forgiven me. I may have lost my way, but you have directed me where I should go and how I should. And even when I've come up short, you've given me the understanding that life is still worthwhile. If you lose that sense, 
It means for the slightest sickness we might face, or the slight setback, we turn and say, come take my life. I'm of no use, I'm of no need, no use whatsoever. We can hardly see ourselves as being a sharer in this whole creation, perpetual creation. Instead, we want to see ourselves as being magnanimous, great, and powerful. The lessons today hit home to us in many ways to be humble before God and before our fellow brothers and sisters. Don't strive to sort of have them to cow down to you, cow down to you. But see yourself willing to serve as our Lord did. Yes, he came into the world. But he didn't walk around with a one to destroy or to say, you are below me. He washed the feet of his disciples. He healed the sick. He did things that others felt ought not to be done. Yet he did it. And that's a lesson to us. A lesson to us here and those listening at home. It goes beyond the lesson that somehow people around you might turn and say, oh, you ought not to be so humble. But humility doesn't mean servility. What it means is accepting a special place for you and for me to make sure that we continue to be part and parcel of God's worker. Making you every single day in our lives. Seeing our action as being relevant. But also seeing that what God has done for us or through us doesn't put us very high above others, but we see every other person as being equal to us. And going back to the old saying, no man is an island. No person can live by himself. He depends a great, he or she depends a great deal on others. If you think of your own life, you can't be an island. You depend on others to, to plant and ship and transport the food and clothing and everything. If you had to do every single thing for yourself, it would be impossible. Being humble. Being able to accept that we're just one person in this God's world willing to serve and to be served and not to lord it over our brothers and sisters. Uh, sorry, we have Samita Ramsey who will now sing. Good day to everyone. Today I will attempt to sing. <laughs> My song is called I Believe. Uh, 
I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone who goes astray, someone will come to show the way. I believe, I believe, I believe for, uh, I believe for above a storm the smallest prayer will still be heard. I believe that someone in the great somewhere hears every word. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry or touch a leaf or see the sky, then I Yes, my 90th. Thanks, <laughs> 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 for that inspirational song. God bless you. Please stand for the creed. I believe in God.
in peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, for Bishop Mary, and for all clergy, Father Jim, Reverend Joseph, Reverend Majola, and the people of St. Paul's, and the people of this world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather, and for abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, for especially those on our sick list, for prisoners and captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strive, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, so let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O oh Lord. Let's say together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, you have you given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised to your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their request. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this, in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, friends, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned sin against, against you in thought, thought word, and deed, by, by what we have done, done and by, by what, what we, we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. We, we are truly sorry and we have to repent. For, For the sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, have, have mercy on us and forgive us, that you may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's play. 
offering number 721, All Things Bright and Beautiful. <clears throat> Oh, please, 
eternal God, your word inspires our faith. May we who offer you our prayers trust you in all things. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks It is indeed right that we should praise your gracious God. For you created all things, you formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened the path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and to your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom, and through the prophets you renewed your promise of salvation. And therefore, with all your saints who serve you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name, singing. As we pray, Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, to God and the Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank without costs and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night, he freely gave himself to death. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. And do this in remembrance of me. supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave him thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God. <coughs> His perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. And by raising him to life, you've given us life forevermore. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith.
recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory. Your Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all of us who eat and drink at this table may be one body, one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father. Now and forever. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. The gifts of God for us, the people of God. of our Lord Jesus Christ which are given for you. Preserve your body and soul into everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The sacrament will now be distributed first of all to the cantors and then to you and the congregation. The cantors will then sing the communion anthem. Uh, I will come down uh, into the congregation and distribute the sacrament. Anyone not wanting the sacrament remains seated and you receive a blessing. Want to do the blessing. Want to do the blessing. For the communion, number two, four, one.
God of peace. You've nourished us with the sacrament of the body of Christ. May we who have taken holy things keep faith in our hearts and lives in the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All your works praise you, O Lord. And your faithful servant bless you. Gracious God, we thank, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May, May we who share his body and live his risen life, we, we who drink his cup bring life to others, others. We whom the spirit life give light to the world. Keep us firm with the hope that you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth lift to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. For our notices, <coughs> we would like to welcome, as usual, we have Reverend Eve Joseph with us. And this morning we have an extra person visiting, Reverend John Fischeri, um, who is really supposed to be, he's coming to get himself into for another parish. Uh, we hope it's going to be St. Lawrence, but there is technical immigration things have to be gone through first. So Jean Fils, uh, nice having you here with us. He speaks four languages, and that is regular French, Spanish, English, and Creole. <laughs> I think um, he is also, what do you speak, how many, how many languages? See, all right. <laughs> Coming from um, Haiti, they had to be um, unfortunate. I had a fortunate or unfortunate thing while I was in the Caribbean working for the province. Haiti was regarded as part of America, Haiti and Cuba. And so when I worked in all the other islands, um, I only visited Haiti twice. Um, but I couldn't do any work there because they weren't part of the province of the West Indies. But Jean-Fils has worked all over, um, including the States, and now coming to work in Canada. So he's here. Thank you for being with us this morning. Um, and we hope that all the things have worked out very quickly for you. <coughs> they, all the things, a happy and a healthy week to all members and visitors who share the spirit of worship. We are thankful to God for granting us life and health to enjoy this autumn season. May our lives be filled with God's blessing of joy. In your times of sorrow or pain, may his love and mercy give us strength. In times of despair or hopelessness, may his grace direct and open new paths before us so that you led to lives of calmness and hope. And may we be drawn to God and have our faith in him strengthened. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Next Sunday, October 24th, is going to be the 21st Sunday of Trinity, Pentecost 22. The services will be at usual, 9, 11, and 4. 11 is in person and Zoom, and 4 o'clock is Zoom, even so. Wednesday morning, there will be meditation and prayer, morning prayers, 10 o'clock. We have a regular attendance for this. Um, so sometimes it gets up to 21 people, sometimes 17. And also the Bible study, a similar thing happens on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock in the Bible study in Compline. The cantors will have a rehearsal as usual on Friday at 4. The other notices, as you possibly see in the bulletin you have, you can naturally take away this. Uh, and please remember, uh, we have the ability to sort of have the capacity of at least 50% of our uh, congregation. And, uh, but we have limited to 80 persons. And I saw what 80 persons look like when I had a, um, a funeral recently which is really comfortable. For funerals, 
and baptisms, the numbers are laid down, um, uh, especially if the situation is that many people are coming from different homes, you will have to spread out in the nave. I remind you again, while the deacon is allowed to visit people in the hospitals or in or the senior homes, we are not allowed to do any um, ordinary home visits because there is no guarantee that um, people will actually sanitize or make sure that the air is clean. So we, um, the, we haven't been given permission by the office to do ordinary home visits. In dire emergency, we might try it, but then it's also rather difficult. Our birthday greeting goes out to Samita, who sang her song, I Believe. Let me give her a cheer. And sing happy birthday to her. are extended for all members of the parish and our friends some of them the first names are there <coughs> please sort of given your names um, the connection is always there on telephone we pray for our friends and family in the Caribbean and other parts of the world that are suffering from normal disasters natural disasters torrential rains flooding strong winds tornadoes or states of the storms of, storms of nature. We pray for the protection of the Holy Spirit to all and that they experiences, they, these people in the storms experience God's mercy and rescue. The church calendars for 2022 are available and can be gotten from the office. Thank you for being here. As you noticed this morning was rather cool. When you face the coldness when you open the door this morning, you felt like going back home, right? <laughs> so that's the thing. Of having had all that rain yesterday, you know, it was a matter of a rather cool morning. It was rather peculiar with all the rain. I couldn't get the leaves off the steps and all the rest. So I had to hustle and get it done this morning so nobody can slip. Anyhow, enjoy the fall. God bless you. We sing our final hymn. Hallelujah. Sing to Jesus. <coughs>
Oh, oh.